Okay class, today we're going to talk about inverse functions. And before we can talk about inverse functions, we have to first talk about the original function. You cannot have a transformation to an inverse function unless the original function is a one-to-one -one function. And what do I mean by one-to-one? -one? It means if I have two different inputs, then that means each of the inputs corresponds to two different outputs. In other words, there is no one input that's going to have, uh, there are no two in inputs that are going to have the same output. So not only do the X's not cheat, but neither do the Y's cheat on the X's. Whereas in a function, you just need to guarantee that the X's don't cheat. But in a one-to-one -one function, the Y's don't cheat on the X as well as the X is not cheating on the Y's. And you can represent or identify if a function is one-to-one -one by the horizontal line test. And a horizontal line test says, if I were to take a horizontal line and it, inter and it would intersect my graph, it will intersect my graph in at most one point. That lets you know that it's a one-to-one -one function. So over here, we have two different functions. One is a linear function and one is a quadratic function. Well, if I were to do the horizontal line test on the linear function, as you can see, every horizontal line that I draw will intersect the, will intersect the uh, linear function in at most one spot. In this case, it intersects it, the one spot is here. But over here for the quadratic function, in this case, every horizontal, well, almost every horizontal line that I draw will intersect the quadratic function into two points. So in this case, even though this is a function, this is not a one-to-one -one function because the horizontal line test fails. It intersects the graph in two different spots. Whereas for the linear function, this is a function, um, a one-to-one -one function because it passes the the horizontal line test for every single horizontal line that we would draw. So if a the original function is a one-to-one -one function, then there is a transformation of that to an inverse function, which is an inverse, but which is also a function as well. And the best way to represent the inverse of a function is to take the original graph the original function and reflect it across the line y equals x. So as you can see here in this particular case, the original function is in red, and that's my f of x, and the transform function or the inverse function is in blue, and that's my inverse function. And the way I know it's an inverse is because the exponent is a negative one. All that negative one tells you is that this is the inverse of the function f. And as you can see, I have here the line y equals x, which is dash, and after I were to reflect the original function, which is the red graph, across the line y equals x, the resulting graph that would occur would be in blue, and we call that the inverse function. And because the inverse of a function is reflected across the line y equals x, then that means situations are ref, uh, switched. So for example, in this particular point, um, let me say this point right here, the coordinate of this point is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So the coordinate of this point is five, three. But when I reflect it across the line, y equals x, its resulting point right here is the coordinates 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, So in other words, the inverse function switches the x coordinate with the y coordinate which means that the domain of the original function is going to end up being the range of the inverse function. And the range of the original function is the domain of the inverse function because the x's and the y's are switched.
To verify that a function is an inverse function, you would actually take the inverse function and input the output of the original function. And if you get back the original input, then that means you have verified that this is an in that these two functions are inverses of another and vice versa. So when graph the original function and the inverse function are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. In other words, they're the result of reflecting each other across the line y equals x. So if I want to, if I have the original coordinate of the original, on the original graph, I can find the, an inverse coordinate by basically switching x and y. So for example, in our case, if y was 5 because I input it into f3, then for the inverse function, 3 would have to equal f of 5, which means that it corresponds to the point 5 comma 3. So I know it's confusing and we'll do more of this in class, but the thing I want you to take away from um, this video is that the inverse function is only a function if the original function is one to one. In other words, the x's and the y's don't cheat. And also, in order to graph the inverse function, you would switch, you would reflect the original function across the line y equals x. And what ends up happening is that the original coordinates of x and y are going to be switched. So if I started off with the point 2, 4 in the original function, then for the inverse function, my coordinates for the inverse related point are going to be 4, 2 because I've switched my x with my y.